All right, welcome to uh, module 10 lesson one part two. So we're continuing to talk about contracts. Uh, let's talk about, we're gonna just focus on configuration. Uh, so one of the things you can do, if, if maybe you wanna you know, set up communication between two EPGs and you're not really 100% certain on the exact traffic flows between those two EPGs you want to allow, what you can do first is just leave everything wide open. So notice here you're creating a contract uh, and you're saying no filter, allow all traffic. And so if you apply this contract between two EPGs, essentially what you're doing is, again, regardless of who's the provider of the contract and who's the actual consumer of the contract, uh, you're allowing all communication bi-directionally in both directions. And then, so then what you can do is once you start to understand what your traffic flow is, then what you can do is start to use like real filters and tighten things down. So I'm gonna show you step-by-step -step how you go about creating contact contracts, you do subjects, and then you create your filters, and then you apply the contract. So step one, you simply create the contract. So I'm actually within the tenant here and I'm right clicking security policies. Uh, this screen pops up and that's it. I simply create uh, the contract. Now, like a lot of things in ACI, so what you can do is move on to the next step. So you're in the contract window. If you wanted to, you can move in and then start creating your subjects by hitting the plus sign. And that would launch the subject, you know, a new window. But again, I, I purposely have separated these steps out into individual steps. So you can really understand which each step is doing. Because one of the things, and I think I mentioned this before, but one of the things that's very easy to do in ACI is you click one window, you hit the plus sign, it opens a new window, and then you hit the plus sign, you get into a, another window, and it's very easy to get lost in your configuration and forget what the heck you're doing. So anyways, that takes us to step two. So step two, I'm gonna go under my actual contract, and then I'm gonna right click it and say create contract subject, and that opens up a subject, and I simply name the subject. Uh, and so this is like our visual image. I created the contract, within the contract I created the SSH subject. And then again, notice if I wanted to, I could open up this little plus sign and then it would allow me to configure filters within the subject. But that I'm gonna separate into the next step. Uh, the other thing you do in the subject is you define how the filters are going to be applied. And so there's actually a lot of confusion around these options and I think it's actually understandable with the wording they use here. A lot of times, let's say later on, you were to create like a filter for uh, destination port 22. A lot of times what people think is when you, if you were gonna apply this contract with this subject configuration settings, and these are the default settings, is that we're gonna open up port 22 in both directions from the either provider or the consumer. Um, and then we reverse filter ports. We allow the uh, other device to respond source port 22. That's actually not what these two check marks are enabling. We'll talk exactly in more detail at the end of this lecture what these two check boxes do. But the one thing to keep in mind is the way we're setting up this uh, subject here is later when I create my filter, I'm only gonna open up destination port 22 in one direction. That's gonna be going to my provider. Um, but again, for now, just know that I created my contract. Uh, within the contract, I created my subject, and we'll talk about these two options a little bit later on. So that takes us to step three. We're gonna create a filter under our subject. And so notice I'm creating a filter. Uh, it is for TCP destined to port 22. And remember, the automatic action we'll take on the traffic is going to be permit. 
So the fourth step, all we have to do is apply the contract. Now, there's different ways to do this. I'm, the way I'm showing you is I think it's actually kind of tricky to get this to work. Uh, it's not that intuitive, but uh, this is like a visual representation. So when you first get on the screen, you don't. this green C is not here because I haven't applied the contract. So you, you would just see these two blue E's here, you know, the DBEPG and the app EPG. Uh, what you'd want to do is you want to drag the C icon. You first want to drag it to the EPG that is going to be the provider. And then what you do is you then drag it over to the second EPG. So you do this all with like one drag. Okay, so you drag here and then move it to the other EPG and then you drop. And then what happens is you'll see you'll, this. This what, the reason why we have this other green circle is because I dragged that green circle down here. Dragged it here first. Notice the arrow is pointing to the contract. So this is the provider. And then I drag the e, the C over to the second E, and that EPG will be the consumer. Notice the arrow is going away from the contract. Now what happens after you drop the C on this second EPG is bam, this window comes up. Um, and you have a, the ability to change uh, when this window comes up, who's the consumer of the contract, who's the provider. Because maybe you messed something up when you did this whole drag and drop craziness. And so this screen pops up. And if you want to, you can change. But notice here, my consumer EPG of the contract is the app EPG. My provider EPG is simply the database EPG. And that's it. Contract has been applied between the EPGs uh, and now the app EPG should be able to send traffic destined to the database EPG destined port 22. So just a couple of contract benefits. I would say some of the benefits of contracts, if you compare them to ACLs, they're a lot easier to read. So ACLs, you might see this long list of access control entries and they're created by sub with subnet information. So you might be looking at an access control entries and say, I have no idea what we're trying to accomplish here. Well, contracts are pretty simple. Notice here, I'm gonna click on the app profile. And then if I look at to the screen to the right, you'll see the con there's a contract. This is the name of the contract. It's applied to these two EPGs and we, you guys did this before. I asked you who's the provider and who's the consumer in the last part of this lecture. Uh, and you can see here, okay, this contract, uh, this, e, this EPG is the provider. It's got the arrow going to it. And then the other EPG is the consumer. The arrow is going away from the contract. And then you can also drag your mouse over the C and then it shows you the different filters. So I can see by looking at this contract, the devices in the app EPG should be able to send traffic to devices in the DB EPG. If it's destination port 22, if it's ICMP or ICM version, ICMP version six traffic. Uh, another benefit of contracts, all this stuff we configured, contracts, subjects, filters, all this can be reused. So that's, again, another benefit over ACLs. ACLs, maybe you can copy and paste, but you probably wouldn't want to do that. Uh, but all this stuff can be reused, you know, between different EPGs. All right, the last thing we're going to hone in here, because this I was a little interested in this topic, uh, is I did a little digging on this and testing. Uh, but notice here, so one of the things you do in step two is you create the subject, but then they have these two checkboxes. Now, I would say, you know, for the most part, you were just gonna wanna leave these as a default config. And I'll talk about maybe why you would, you would maybe why you'd wanna uncheck those. But let's actually define what the heck these two checkboxes mean. So here I have my, let's say the SSH contract, uh, the DB EPG is the provider, and then my app EPG is the consumer. Uh, notice I left the default config on the subject. All this does 
is it allows for bi-directional communication. So my contract has destination port 22. So obviously the app EPG can send traffic to the DB EPG destined port 22. But guess what? A device on, in the DB EPG needs to respond, needs to respond to that traffic. And when it responds, it's going to respond source port 22. So when you click, when you select apply in both directions, the filter gets applied in both directions, but when you select reverse filter ports, it allows the device that's the provider to respond from the source port. Now, you also could, for some reason, if you wanted to, leave this first option checked and then uncheck this. I'm just going to put a red dot through it. What that would do is allow the other device to send traffic destined to port 22, but it couldn't respond. So if you applied this filter right now, SSH actually would not work because the app server could send traffic destined to port 22, but the database server in the DBEPG is not allowed to send traffic sourced from port 22, so it can't respond. Um, what you can also do is leave this unchecked and notice this option is unchecked. Uh, this allows for just single communication, unidirectional communication. So if you uncheck both of these, the app EPG can send traffic desk into port 22, but hey, guess what? This device cannot respond on source port 22. So I did some research on, cause it, you know, I, I did some research on these options on why maybe you'd want to leave these unchecked. And I did a little digging uh, and what I came across is they just want to give you more flexibility in how you define your filters. So what you could do is now if you set up your filters like this, and this is the common way you're going to do it. This is setting up your filters to be bi-directional. You allow the consumer EPG to communicate to the provider, destined port in this example, and then you allow the database devices in the database EPG to flip that destination port to become the source port and they can respond. So that communication is allowed. Now what you could do is if you wanted to is you could configure more unidirectional uh, unidirectional filters. So for some reason you want to uncheck these, you could create one filter that's called the like destination SSH filter. Uh, and then that opens up destination port 22 from the consumer to the provider. And then you could create a separate filter, a second filter called source SSH. And then you would apply that differently though, right? So for the source, I guess for the source SSH filter, you'd want to probably, uh, no, actually, yeah, you wouldn't, I'm trying to think about this now. If we go back to the filter, so yeah, you would want to make, yeah, you would want to make the database EPG uh, the consumer. So you'd want to do a separate uh, subject and you'd want to make the database EPG the consumer, and you want it to be able to respond source 22 to the app EPG, and then it would be the provider. So you would set up, in that scenario, you would set up at a minimum multiple filters, and I think you would have to add them to different subjects. Um, and so that's what that would be setting up your contracts if you wanted a little bit more granularity, but I think for most people that's probably unnecessary. Um, the big takeaway is leave this default config most of the time. And if you are, it doesn't mean we're setting up SSH communication in both directions. All this is, is the consumer can send traffic to the provider these two options allow the provider to respond back. All right, that's all I got. Thanks.